Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ today's message is based on our epistle lesson from 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter tells us to come to him, that is, to Jesus. He is the living stone whom men rejected, but God selected as precious. He is the living stone. Jesus, he is the rock that followed the Israelites in the wilderness, which Moses struck and gave them water. He is the rock that comes down from heaven in Daniel and smashes the idol of Babylon. Jesus, he is the rock and foundation stone for the kingdom of God and the temple of God. He is the rock upon which all of our spiritual sacrifices are offered. Moses says of him, the rock, what he does is perfect. Yes, in all his ways are right. A faithful God without any wrong. Just and righteous is he. David says of him in 2 Samuel 22, the Lord, my rock and my fortress, is the one who rescued me. I found shelter in God, who is my rock, my shield, the mighty one who saved me, my mountain retreat, my refuge, my savior, who delivered me from violence. Isaiah says of him in chapter 28, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation, and whoever believes will not be in haste. Throughout the Old Testament, in many other places, it is testified about the rock, that stone that we can put our trust in. The Lord our God had put it before the Israelites and constantly told them to put their trust in him. And when he finally came, in Matthew 21, Jesus said to them, Have you not read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on a stone will be broken to pieces. When it falls on anyone, it will crush him. And when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. See your figure, huh? They they perceived. One of the few times they understood one of Jesus' parables. They perceived he was talking about them. That is, they were rejecting him, the one whom God had appointed to be the chief cornerstone. He is the rock chosen and precious, but rejected by God them. And we see that rejection as they bring him in the kangaroo court at night, bring him before Pilate and Herod's courts and lead him to the cross. And even after his resurrection, we are seeing here in Acts 4, Peter proclaimed to them, This Jesus is a stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among you, by which you must be saved. And in our 
epistle, our first lesson from Acts today, we see St. Stephen as he is proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah there in the synagogue of the freemen. And what happens? Those in the synagogue reject Jesus. Those who should have received him reject him and cast Stephen out, out of the city and stone him to death with Saul as witness. Saul, who would later become an apostle of the very same Jesus, who would tell Pastor Ananias, don't be afraid of him. He will see how much he must suffer for my name's sake. This Jesus has called you. He has called you out of all the peoples of the world to be living stones, to be made one with Jesus in his life, to be made living stones in his temple through the waters of holy baptism and through faith in his name. You, St. Peter says, are living stones being bring into a spiritual temple to be holy priests bringing spiritual sacrifices that God gladly accepts through Jesus Christ. Yes, all of you, priests of God through Jesus Christ offering spiritual sacrifices. And what kind of sacrifices are these? But proclaiming to other people what Jesus Christ has done. By putting your trust in him and him alone. By offering up yourself as service. To be of service to your neighbor. And especially to your fellow Christian. For those who disobey the word, he is a stone which, rejected by the builders, has become the cornerstone. The stone they stumble over, and the rock they fall over. When they disobey the word, they stumble over it. And that's the end appointed for them. By rejecting Jesus, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, Suffer the fate of those who reject him. And as Jesus is proclaimed throughout the world, in this place and in every place, those who refuse to acknowledge him as the Lord, those who refuse to acknowledge him as their rock, as the foundation of their salvation, as their only source of salvation. They stumble upon him. Sometimes they try to feign faith in him, saying Jesus, but it's always Jesus plus. Jesus' work of salvation is never enough for them. They must put in their two cents. It's generally a lot more than that. They tell you, well, you got to contribute something to your salvation. That is not true. Jesus, he is your rock. He is your foundation. And he himself grafts you into himself and gives you his life and makes you living stones even as he is the living stone. Do not accept any other substitutes. Any Jesus that says that you, you, know, you can contribute to your salvation. That you have to do something to be saved. That his sacrifice is not enough. Well, they blaspheme his name. They are stumbling over him and he will fall on them 
and crush them. Accept no substitute Jesus, who is not your all in all and everything concerning your salvation. If you do, you will be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes who rejected him. No, you haven't been joined to him to the whole waters of holy baptism. He has called you to believe in him and are his holy priest. And you now have become his Israel. Now the, earth, the church is not a substitute for Israel. It just is Israel. We know that many of the Jews did come to faith in Jesus Christ. We know even from our lesson from the Acts, some of the Sadducees, the priests, came to faith in Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their Savior, as their Rock and their Redeemer. And we know that the apostles went out throughout the Roman Empire and throughout the world, wherever they may have been, may have been the Jews, and they proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues, and many of them came to faith in Jesus. And in coming to faith in Jesus and being baptized into his name, they became the holy people of Israel, God's precious and chosen people. St. Peter, in our epistle lesson today, Paul, in his words, tells us that the words spoken to Israel in the Old Testament, such as in Exodus chapter 19, Therefore now, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. And again in Deuteronomy, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. Out of all the peoples of the earth, on the face of the earth. Well, Paul tells us in Titus, Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Yes, you, you are God's precious and holy people. The people he has chosen from all the people of the world. He has chosen you to be his priest. That the world may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 16, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good, good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I know you might be thinking, well, Pastor, did you say we're not saved by our good works? Yes, I did say that, and I still mean it. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to be out doing good works, though. You are. You are to be shining lights to the people here in this place, in Camden County, Miller County, Morgan County, and wherever you may go. You are to be shining lights and now you're going to be saying, but Pastor, didn't Jesus say, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing? Yes, he said, in order that you might be seen by men. But he says here, to do your good works before men, not that you receive glory, but that your Father in heaven receive glory. Jesus said that. Paul says that. Again, Paul tells us in Philippians 2, do all things about grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless, innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Again, our Lord has redeemed us and saved us, not that we may continue in our sins, 
Not that we may not use the freedom that we have from sin, from death, and the power of the devil to go about being selfish, self-centered people only worried about ourselves. But he has called us to love our neighbor, to be of service to our neighbor, to seek out how we may honor our brothers and sisters in Christ more than ourselves. As Jesus said, he came not as one to be served, but to be the servant of all. And so he has called you as his holy royal priest of his kingdom to be of service to one another, to help one another, to clothe one another, to feed one another, occasion maybe even to house one another, to show God's mercy and kindness that he has shown to you by showing it to others who also are not deserving of it. Because we are not deserving of any of the good things that our Lord and Savior has showered upon us, no matter how good we have been. Because God knows the innermost thoughts of our hearts. He knows what we have done. He knows what we said. He knows what we have thought. And indeed, we are not worthy of any of the things that God gives to us. Most of all, the free gift of salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Nevertheless, as St. Peter as he quotes Hosea, I will have mercy on no mercy, and will say to not my people, you are my people, and he shall say, you are my God. Paul tells us in Romans, quoting Hosea Didius, as he says in Hosea, those who are not my people I will call my people, and her who is not my beloved I will call beloved. In the very place where it was said to him, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. <coughs> Most of us here are not Jewish by descent. We are not physical descendants of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob. But many of them did not follow in the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so he has called you, called you out of all the people of the world, called you who did not deserve mercy and has given you his mercy, called you who are not his people. And now he has joined you to Christ through baptism and faith and says, you are my people and I am your God. What great and wondrous Mercy and kindness to God has shown to us that we should constantly be merciful and kind to those around us. And we would show forth the love of God to those around us. Those who we think do not deserve our mercy, those who not, we don't think do not deserve God's mercy. We should be showering upon them the mercy that God has shown us. For indeed, he has been merciful and kind to us, adopting us as his very own children, making us into his holy people Israel, preparing us to enter into his kingdom, which has no end. Such is his gift to you today. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we are not passing the plate again. As you leave today, please offer up your thanksgiving sacrifices to our Lord and Savior and that post over there. In the meantime, until we get to that point, we shall offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, 
Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear, all fear, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. O oh God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning in rest we shall be saved, and quietness and trust shall be our strength. Heavenly Father, we confess to you our fears, our worries, and our anxieties. You have given us your perfect love, which casts out all fear, and your peace, which transcends all understanding. But even still, we feel dislodged, displaced, untethered, and uncertain in these times. We believe, Lord. Help our unbelief. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people as we cry out to you. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all your creation. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls and giver of life. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Gracious O God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those who grieve come to you, and they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us also pray for a swift end to COVID-19, for those infected and those who have been exposed, for the strength and healing and protection, for their loved ones and caretakers, grant them peace, comfort, and endurance, for those leading nations, grant them sound minds, courage, and humility, for physicians, nurses, technicians, researchers, administrators, and all other healthcare employees around the world, grant them strength by your life. Wisdom and resources to do the works before them. For those who must work despite the threat of illness. Grant them protection and continued provision. For those who become unemployed and underemployed during this pandemic. Grant them comfort, wisdom, and financial provision. For churches and their clergy. For parents and families, grant them wisdom, patience, and joy. For children, grant them protection from fear. For those whose home is not a safe haven, grant them <coughs> For those who are alone, grant them the sense of your newness and love. For all navigating decisions during this time of uncertainty and fear, and for all the prayers we can unvoice because our language is insufficient or our ignorance too great. Glory to our prayer. Amen. O oh God, your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Prayers that we may never forget that our common life depends on each other's soil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, our mercies, un we are unworthy servants. Give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you are made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Merciful God, graciously take into your fatherly care the sick and needy, those who are widowed and orphaned, the homeless, the homebound, the lonely and the forgotten, all who are in any trouble, temptation, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Especially we lift up you today. 
Beta Airwood, Pat Barnes, Donna and Emma Beeman, Stella Cardin, Frank Carlson, Rhonda Connolly, Kenzie Putz, Avery Dom, Henry Goddard, Donovan and Dylan Hill, Gene Hillman, Karen Keel, Jennifer Kwan, John Kretschmar, Richard Kuhn, Sandy Laughlin, Francis Moore, Roger Martins, Larry Murley, Don Doris Meyer, Margaret Scheider, Marta Zabo, Bill Tatley, Richard Topol, Allison Wiseman, and Alan Young. Comfort them, O God, of your Holy Spirit, that they may patiently endure their afflictions and acknowledge them as a manifestation of your fatherly will. Reserve them from faint-heartedness and despondency and help them to seek you, the great physician of their souls. If any pass in the valley of shadow of death, do not allow them in the last hour for any pain or fear of death to fall away from you. But let them in your everlasting arms be underneath them and grant them a peaceful departure and a joyful entrance into your eternal kingdom and the resurrection of all flesh through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Preserve us with your almighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And for all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, and my own peace I leave with you. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with the hymn printed in your bulletin.
that you arm them with a uh, umbrella or a parasol. It's nice and cool today, but it may heat up later on in the next couple of weeks. So help them out. Bring, bring an umbrella or something here to block the sun coming from the east. Uh, also starting next Sunday, we will be having communion indoors. We will dismiss everyone who's not taking communion to exit out that direction there. And then uh, one car coming at a time, leaving six feet between people and sitting in the appointed spots. Uh, each row, each pew will come up one at a time and come to the table. There will be more details later on that and the like. So you can still call and uh, come in during office hours from uh, 9 o'clock to 11.30, Monday through Thursday, or call me to make an appointment and we'd like to receive the Lord's Supper uh, anytime during this time, during this pandemic, so don't forget about that. And other than that, God's blessings on your week, and we ask that if you exit, please exit out that direction over there, and have a great day. Happy Mother's Day, everyone.